All right, look, we know you love golf, right? And when you meet people who say they also love golf, you probably get pretty excited, only to find out that they don't love golf as much as you. In fact, you might be starting to think you're obsessed. And for somebody who obsesses over golf like you, you probably shouldn't run into the same problems on the course over and over again, yet you do. And why is that? Uh, Maybe because you don't take the time to practice. I mean, who the hell has the time? In this podcast, we're going to give you two tips to improving your game at home with the things you already have. Also, we're going to cover our top picks to win the Travelers Championship at TPC River Highlands, and we're going to do a recap of the 2019 U.S. Open. Did you watch it? Were you glued to the TV or not? Let us know your thoughts. The way you can do that is follow us on social media. Go to WeekendGolfGuide.com. Subscribe to our blog. Uh, Go to Stitcher and the Apple Store, Android Store, anywhere podcasts are popular. Subscribe to this podcast. That way you can automatically get all of the great content we're putting out there for free. Yes, for free. We're ad-free. That's the way to be. So uh, let's jump right into it. This is Practicing Golf at Home. This is the Weekend Golf Guy podcast. I'm your host, Travis Patton. Thanks for joining. All right, so if you weren't watching and you don't really follow Gary Woodland, I mean, you probably like him. You see he's wearing folds of honor. You think he's patriotic and a good golfer. I mean, he's been up there on the leaderboard several times before, just never pulled it out. You may have missed the story about his children. Uh, he had twins on the way, and him and his wife lost one of their twins uh, during some complications. So on this Father's Day, I cannot think of a better person to pull this off than Gary Woodland. I mean, to put that all of that emotion aside and just deal with what's going on on the course is truly outstanding. So hats off to Gary Woodland on his win at the 2019 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. Uh, also hats off to the USGA. First time that I can remember um, this being about the players. I mean, typically it's been about the course. I mean, we look back and Chambers Bay was a disaster. It was entirely about the course. The players were in in kind of the background and the course was just terrible. Good shots were not being rewarded. That wasn't the case this year. So I do have to say USGA, good job listening to the fans. Uh, if you are listening, listen to us one more time because overall this was a good tournament. But it wasn't a great why, great one, and here's why. The continuous screams in the background were actually a relief because Joe Buck and Paul Azinger were two of the worst announcers in major history. Get rid of those two buffoons and we'll deal with the ever-growing rambunctious crowd that thinks they're at the Wasted Management Open. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but Baba Booey being screamed in the background continuously just isn't funny anymore. There were a couple comical ones, I'll have to say that. Uh, when somebody yelled corduroys at Matt Kuchar, that was pretty epic. Um, but unless you have that kind of comedic relief, uh, saying the same thing over and over just to get on Fox News or wherever, uh, it's it's kind of sold out. It's not happening for me. Um, listen, I thought Brooks Kepka was going to take this. If you guys didn't see this, uh, Brooks Kepka was 4 under through 5 holes and he gave one back on the 8th to finish at a front 932 and even on the back 9 he should have had at least 3 birdies uh, on the back 9 a couple iron shots that just weren't quite as close he wasn't dialed in with his putter on the back 9 like he was on the front but that was the story all week so a second place for Brooks Kepka. congratulations to him a- an awesome achievement uh, and to see Rosie just collapse, that was a little bit sad. I was hoping he was in contention at the end of it. Maybe going into a playoff hole. Still loved seeing Gary Woodland win. A great story. Awesome achievement. Uh, and that was the 2019 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. Hey, listen, let's go into exactly what this podcast is about. And that's practicing golf at home. All right, so the Travelers Championship at TPC River Highlands in Connecticut is only a few hours away. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck to get down there. Watch these guys just tear that course apart. But listen, if you're, I mean, it's very easy to do, right? 
Uh, we had the U.S. Open. It's the week after a major. If you're a DraftKings guy, I mean, you might have just blown your wad. I always fucking suck at U.S. at, at majors, right? At the U.S. Open, particularly, I'm. I always pick terribly. Uh, in our blog post, actually, only two of the six players uh, missed the cut, but none of my big picks really did great. I didn't pick Gary Woodland, and for the first time in five weeks, we didn't pick the winner in in our lineups. However, I still managed to squeeze out over a hundred dollars. Uh, of profit through some kind of showdown picks. If you don't play showdowns, let me give you a tip. The showdown big dollar ones, right? The $30 per day, uh, that's where you play at. If you do well on those, you profit pretty good. So just kind of a quick tip. But I mean, maybe you kind of just destroyed your entire bankroll. I don't know. But the Traveler's Field, my first look at this entire thing, it's actually a pretty fucking strong field. I'm going to give you the big names in this, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, so correct me if I'm wrong on any of our social media outlets, but you got Brooksy, you got Bryson DeChambeau, you got Patrick Reed, Jason Day, Keegan Bradley, Paul Casey, Tommy Fleetwood, Tony the Pony Finau, Floppy Phil Mickelson, and let me just tell you this, on the Travelers Championship website, Phil looks like fucking Willy Wonka. And actually, I'm going to post it on Instagram so you guys can see it. Follow us on Instagram so you can see Floppy Phil Wonka. Uh, you got Francesco Molinari, the most boring fucker in golf. Louis the Ui Ustazen, who played excellent this past week. Uh, I don't know if I'll have him any of my lineups, but he did play great. Jordan Spieth hasn't won since 2017. Probably not going to put him in my lineups. That means he'll probably win. Uh, JT in the past champion, Bubba Watson. And last but not least, the man who I could give my left nut for uh, to play around and go fishing with, Boo Frickin' Weekly. You guys are probably like, Boo Weekly? He's not a big name. Absolutely he is. That guy is a freaking legend. So listen, I'm going to give you my quick overall prediction of the winner, right? This is unpopular opinion. I mean, you have so many big names in this tiny tournament the week after a major I don't think this is going to resonate with you, but I'm going out on a limb and I'm saying Keegan Bradley is going to win this. Why? Because it's in the Northeast. Keegan Bradley knows these type of courses. Uh, He does an excellent job. And I just think he played really well the first round. He kind of, he's shown moments of brilliance. And I just, I don't know, I got this feeling that Keegan Bradley is going to take the whole thing. That's my personal opinion. Share with me what you think. Who's going to win this tournament? A pretty loaded field. Um, and it doesn't even include everybody. That you know, There's so many other good people. you got Sam Saunders uh, and just a ton of people. J.J. Spawn, Robert Streb, who's played pretty well. Chris Stroud, Brian Stroud. A ton of, a ton of different type of people. Uh, so I'm going to make a few lineups. I'm going to pick the low guys, kind of probably who I'm thinking are the low dollar guys. Uh, the values aren't out on DraftKings at the time of this recording. And I'm going to mix in a couple people who I think will do good. Obviously, Brooks, I mean, how do you not pick that guy to win? But, I mean, he just may be totally out of the loop after giving so much. I mean, think about the mental capacity it would take to stay within a round uh, uh, for that long at a major championship. I just don't know that Brooksy will be there. But you got so many other people, including like Adam Hadwin, who played really well. I, I think at the Canadian Open, um, you could you could say make an argument for him. I'm gonna do another podcast that gives you my solid one lineup. I also make other lineups, but I'm gonna give you my one solid lineup. That'll just be a quick 10 minute podcast that'll come out on Wednesday. Uh, but for right now, my overall pick to win the Travelers Championship, based off of everything I've looked at, the course and everything else. I've got Keegan Bradley. You guys share with me what you think uh, on any of our social media outlets. Thanks so much for listening to this one. We're going to jump right now into what this entire podcast is about. This is uh, giving you two tips for practicing at home. You should have everything you need in this upcoming little uh, segment of this podcast. Here it comes. All right, listen, so... You probably do fine on the tee box. In fact, you might be the biggest bomber in your group of guys. Uh, You probably don't struggle a ton with your irons. 
you probably get it pretty close to the green for most holes. Uh, par threes might give you some challenges if you're not great with your irons. It may be hit or miss. Some days you're on and some days you're off. But something that continuously fucks you every single week is your ability to get up and down from around the greens. And we saw it in the U.S. Open, right? The guys, look at Rosie. Uh, he played great on scrambling. That's really where you make up a lot of shots. So in this particular podcast, we're going to give you two tips to improve around the green, but most importantly, alignment. It's somewhere that I personally struggled with for a long time. I worked on it for more than a year just to get towards the hole uh, and get closer proximity to the hole, right? That was it. Um, it, It's very easy to understand. If you're closer to the hole, you have a better odds of making it. So that's what we're going to do. Here's our first tip. Find a corner of your yard. If you have a fenced-in yard, that's great. If you don't, put a stake in the ground. You're going to go to 10 yards away from that stake. And you're going to take three golf balls and your favorite wedge. I don't care if it's a flop wedge, a pitching wedge, a seven iron for all you old fucks that like to bump and run it. Um, Look, whatever you typically chip it with, whatever you're most comfortable with, go to 10 yards And you're going to focus on hitting chips into that stake or post. If you're hitting into a corner, that's ideal, a corner of your yard. If you have a high wooden fence or something like that, you do not want to hit chips that hit the fence. You want them to roll and bounce into the corner. And you want to visualize that next time you get out on the course. You're going to continue to chip to that corner. Pick a spot on the green and hit into the corner of your fence, into the post. That's all you're going to focus on. You're going to do it for 10 minutes. Think about it while you're out there grilling or barbecuing, scooping dog shit, whatever it is that you're out there in your yard doing. Bring your kids, bring your wife, uh, and chip into a corner of your yard. Or if you don't have a corner of your yard, there's no fence. Uh, 10 yards or less, go ahead and work on chipping into a post that you've put in the ground. Uh, Work on that for about 10 minutes. Here's the next thing you're going to do. Because it's dark now, you're already tanked because you were grilling and drinking, they go hand in hand. You're going to go inside your house. You're going to find a carpeted area. If you don't have a carpeted area, I implore you to purchase one of those little 8 to 10 foot putting greens uh, that they have. You can roll them out, find them at Dick's Sporting Goods, anywhere online. Um, so, So purchase one of those. But typically, most people have carpet in their house. Take a coffee mug. You're going to measure eight feet on your floor. Put a piece of tape on the floor, a coin, your cell phone, a sleeping baby. It doesn't matter. From eight feet, you're going to work on putting into a coffee mug until it hits clink. You're going to do that for 10 minutes. So 20 minutes of practice for the next three days. Uh, That's the Weekend Golf Guy podcast three-day challenge. So take it. Show us your pictures. Do it on Instagram. Share with us that you're actually practicing these things. And then when you get out to the course this week and visualize that, visualize these putts, this alignment, the speed's going to be different on all the different courses you play. But the alignment is really where maybe you struggle. Uh, So those are my two tips for you at home with the things you already have. It takes a couple golf balls, your putter, a wedge, and a particular part of your house. If you're not spending this time 20 minutes a day practicing, are you really actually concerned about getting better? I don't know. Listen, give me some feedback. Share with me what you like to do. What are some of your favorite at-home drills? I'd love to try them out. I'll post that I'm actually testing them out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that really good stuff. Listen, this has been an absolute pleasure making this podcast for you. I'm Travis Patton. This is the Weekend Golf Guy podcast. And on Wednesday, we're going to have another output for you. It's going to be our fantasy DraftKings pick. I'm going to give you one full lineup of mine. You can copy it. You can tailor it to your uh, desires. That's coming out on Wednesday. Hey, thanks so much for being an awesome listener. Please subscribe to this podcast. As we mentioned below, uh, you know, or before, excuse me, we're an ad-free podcast. So any of the love that you can share with us, we greatly appreciate. Thank you. Travis Patton here. Until next time, have a good one.